With the law and the president on his side, Mulholland set out in 1905 to build his aqueduct across the desert. It was a great drama. It was a great epic drama, the building of that aqueduct. You have mule teams and you have men. They were working in desert heats, arid conditions. Water was a problem. Ironically enough, here in this giant water project, they had, they had to worry about adequate water for the, the working stock and the men. It can be almost freezing at, at night and then 110 degrees in the daytime, practically. Mulholland was there all the time. Chief Engineer Mulholland had no formal training in civil engineering. He had, in fact, never graduated from grade school. The automobile had barely been invented. Clipper ships were still sailing the seas. And this was an engineering project the likes of which the world had really never seen before. Mulholland ordered a 12-foot steel pipe forged in Germany and shipped around the Horn. A hundred thousand men and women worked on the aqueduct but never more than a few thousand at a time because the exhausting and dangerous work kept turnover so high. They had been farmhands, cowboys, and hard rock miners, but now they were city employees, civil servants like the chief himself. With no air conditioning, no refrigeration, no hard hats, in 110 degree heat, they crossed the Mojave in five years with a pipe big enough to hold a locomotive. This was, uh, you know, an aqueduct that would have reached all the way across Massachusetts and then almost all the way back through a desert with mountains. What they were really building was, was the world's longest garden hose. Surveyors said they could build the aqueduct simply by following the trail of whiskey bottles Mulholland and Eaton had thrown off the back of their buckboard in 1904. In the end, the chief and his lieutenants finished the job under budget and ahead of schedule. William Mulholland built his original aqueduct so well that to this day it still carries the Owens River to the people of Los Angeles. The phrase, Grandpa's aqueduct, were among my first words. The day of the dedication of the aqueduct was without a doubt the high point of my grandfather's life. A crowd of 30 to 40,000 Los Angelinos had gathered at the base of the spillway. There was a formal program, but once the water spilled down the cascade, the formal program was abandoned because thousands of people rushed with their tin cups to drink the water. When the water came cascading down there, Mulholland, who, who was really exhausted at the time, gave what I think is the most concise dedication speech in history. He unfurled an American flag, he turned to the water, and he said, there it is, take it. Based on Mulholland's predictions, it was four times more water than Los Angeles could use. 